Welcome to the Scholar's Chair. The famous physicist Albert Einstein proposed the theory of matter-energy equivalence in 1905. The relationship between matter and energy is described by the famous equation E equal mc squared. Einstein published articles of his work in scientific journals in 1905 contribute substantially to the foundation of modern physics, greatly influencing how physicists today understand space, time, and matter. To educate us about Einstein's theory and the science of physics, we invited William Dowling, a specialist in information technology and degree in photonic science from Rochester Institute of Technology. Along with him is Dr. Steve Blau, with a PhD in theoretical physics from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and is presently staff editor of the Physics Today magazine. We are also honored uh, to have author and educator Dr. Sylvester James Gates. He is currently the John Tao Professor of Physics at the University of Maryland College Park and serves on President Barack Obama Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. Tonight on the Scholar's Chair, Einstein's big idea, science and physics and the global future. Mr. Dowling, explain to us Albert Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared. Okay, well, that is a very famous equation, um, which shows the equivalence of mass and energy. Mm -hmm. um, before that time, before Einstein developed a theory of, uh, and then found how to relate the two, we didn't really know whether matter and energy were two separate things or if they were equivalent. Mm -hmm. So you have a math problem of uh, keeping two balance sheets of balancing your mass and balancing your energy. Mm -hmm. um, and, or they could have been related. They could have been related in a very complex way with a um, horrible, messy differential equation that had 15 terms and five arbitrary <laughs> constants. Um, <laughs> right. But it turned out that it had a very simple relationship like uh, Newton's uh, equation F equals mv, mm -hmm. a simple um, uh, proportion against a constant. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, Einstein knew that Mm -hmm. uh, speed of light was a constant because earlier an experiment done by Michelson Morley, the most famous failed experiment mm -hmm. in the history of physics, showed that no matter which direction you went <laughs> or no matter where you were, light was always, the speed of light was always a constant. Always a constant. So that helped. It's interesting. It also make a nice design for a t-shirt. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it has been used for t-shirts. I can imagine. Let me, let me ask uh, Steve uh, because, in fact, uh, answer the same question. EEMC e square, what, is, what does it mean? Um, let me elaborate a little bit on on what William said. Mm -hmm. this, the proportionality constant C squared is the speed of light. Mm -hmm. And if you measure that speed in normal units, like speed is distance over time. If your distance is a meter and your time is a second, mm -hmm. the speed of light is a tremendously big number. Mm -hmm. And what that means in E equals mc squared is that a little bit of mass gets an awful lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And that's the physics behind, for example, nuclear reactions. In a nuclear reaction, the actual change in mass of a nucleus undergoing a nuclear reaction is extremely small. Mm -hmm. But you get a reasonable amount of energy out of it nonetheless mm -hmm. because the speed of light is so big. Mm -hmm. A mass starting explosion, essentially. That, that's right. Yes. That's right. It's, it's, it's an interesting uh, way of thinking about it. Professor Gates? Well, uh, I'd say two things about the equation. Uh, the first one is that it's simple. And Einstein once said, when uh, the results are simple, it's God speaking. Mm -hmm. And so in some sense, you get, a sen you get an idea of the majesty behind physics, the ability to unify things that are very different. The other thing that uh, the equation provides us with is the beginning of how this entire reality could come into being. Mm -hmm. It starts in, for physics, with the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. And the energy converts to mass. That's why you need the equation. Wow. So we're looking at small things, large things, everything. Absolutely. Um, question. The formula and its implication in the world of physics. Uh, do we have physics uh, as we understand it today, 
or do we have something entirely different? So Einstein's theory, does it offer us something important to phys the world of physics? I would say yes. Uh, okay. In fact, many of uh, your audience members, and perhaps you drive around with these uh, GPS locators in their car so mm -hmm. that you don't get lost anymore. Mm -hmm. It turns out that that device depends directly on the work of Einstein, not that equation, but one of his other related equations. So he's actually given us a practical benefit. We couldn't get GPS to work without the guy. Mm, excellent. Steve? Well, the equals mc squared relation is, is related to, for example, nuclear power. Mm -hmm. it's, it is the physics behind nuclear power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's, that's one feature are, of that. Are there things like uh, things that people experience uh, every day? What kinds of things are every day that, that, uh, that a person could relate to? Is that, is, is that one of those questions? Well, <laughs> Jim, Jim has Let me take a shot at that one sure. and, and go back to equals mc squared. Perhaps some of the people in your audience have gone to doctors to get scanning. There's this particular type of technology called PET, which is positron emission tomography. Uh -huh. It's a way of looking inside the body. It actually is built directly on that equation because you need positrons and they come out of that equation. Mm. Applied, applied science, uh, Williams, <laughs> go ahead. Well, I would say probably to the average person it doesn't mean much. Um, however, to the sciences, it's, it's a remarkable, beautiful equation that turned out that some very, very vexing problems in science were very easily uh, put down in a mathematical form. Mm -hmm. And um, so, of course, the scientific community was ecstatic. Mm -hmm. The average person probably would never need to use the equation in everyday life. <laughs> the but teacher. that's okay. I mean, yeah. you, don't need to, you don't need to understand all the math to understand physics. You need to know a few basic things. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is conservation of energy, like we talked about. Um, uh, you can't get more out of a system than what's put into a system. That's it's just, it's, it's impossible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Although even though you don't use it in everyday life, you see it in everyday life. If you right. burn a lump of coal to make a hamburger, mm. the dust in the coal after you've burnt it weighs a little bit less than the original charcoal briquette. Mm. Why? Because okay. the energy... A tiny, 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 tiny and amount. The, perhaps the most prosaic use of this equation is it tells us why the sun is bright. Mm. <laughs> because you see, if the sun wasn't here, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. And so it lets us understand how the sun works. Mm -hmm. that's, that's excellent. What is physics, William? <laughs> physics, uh, well, it, it's the study of how things, how the world works. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, it uh, comes out of, uh, well, science itself comes out of philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and science is a form of mixture of rationalism and empiricism together. So you have mm -hmm. your rational thought, which is backed up by actual observable mm -hmm. uh, data. And of course, mm -hmm. it's a lot more complicated than that. Sometimes you know what the answer is before you get the data. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and coming up with a framework that's testable and can be um, proven or disproven. Mm -hmm. um, physics is basically um, the basis of everything, even chemistry. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look at chemistry, chemistry underneath it is physics. Mm -hmm. When you do chemistry, you don't need to worry about a lot of the stuff in physics, so you sort of just know there's some rules that you just sort of take for granted. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, biology is a form of chemistry, so mm -hmm. physics is really part of everything. I mean, you can't do anything in the universe without involving physics. Excellent, excellent answer. Steve? What do well, you think? it does what try to it? explain the, the the world, and I would say it tries to explain the world in a very fundamental way. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to think of a good way to say what a fundamental way is, and this is what I came up with, that if you've ever had a little kid and the little kid says why, after they ask the first couple of whys and you're really getting down to the nitty gritty, <laughs> <laughs> That's physics. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whys of... Why did that lump of coal burn? Mm -hmm. Well, because I lit a fire under it. Well, why does a fire make it burn? Well, because it reacts with oxygen. Well, why does it react with oxygen? Because the electrons transfer from one material to the other. Well, why do electrons transfer? <laughs> After three or four whys, that's physics. That's great. That's a great, that's a great answer. <laughs> Professor? I would talk about physics not in terms of what it is, but what it does. Okay. It turns out the that, how. Yeah. that yes, it turns out that all of this stuff that we love so much—computers, sitting in the studio, having our image go out, and electrons, uh, modern technology—physics is in fact the creator of technology. In fact, I like to say physics is the DNA of technology because the rules for how you build new technology starts in physics. Mm.